Hey guys, Quint from Canada. My Revo 6 came in on Friday. I'm so excited. I got to use it on my Prusa Mark III. So stick around, let's talk shop. So let's not drag this out. Is this hot end worth getting? Well, honestly, it depends on your application. If you don't have a need to swap out your nozzle, you're happy printing with 0.4 millimeters and your prints look fantastic, you do not need to upgrade. If you like printing with exotic filaments, such as carbon reinforced nylon or glow in the dark, which erodes nozzles, you wanna skip this one for now. At this time, there is no hardened nozzle available for the Revo. But if you're like me and you own multiple machines just to avoid nozzle swaps, I gotta tell you, brother, this may be your holy grail. And that's my dirty little secret. I have my Prusa Mark II set up for a 0.25 millimeter nozzle. I have my Mark III set up with a 0.4. It's been like that for years because I absolutely hate redoing the first layer calibration. I don't find it difficult. I just find it tedious and there's just too much downtime. I hate it. I hate it so much. And that is the problem the Revo fixes for me. Each one of these nozzles is so precisely milled that the delta between the longest and the shortest in my set turned out to be 0.005 millimeters. That is absolutely insane and this margin of error might have even come from my measuring technique. So in my testing I found that I didn't have to adjust the Z height at all going from a 0.4 to a 0.6 to a 0.8 which is awesome because that's the part I hate the most. I did have to adjust the Z offset by a smidgen whenever I went to the 0.25 millimeter nozzle and that adjustment was 0.035. That's absolutely insane. It took me two first layer cal tests in order to get it nailed down precisely. You know what? I could live with that. That is five minutes. That's a beautiful thing. Love it. The swap procedure for this system is very simple. Unload the filament, wait for it to cool down a bit, unscrew the nozzle with your bare fingers, wait until it reaches room temperature, put your new nozzle in. I chose to wait for room temperature because I figured it would get me the most consistent tightening. Tightening when it's hot will always be a little tighter and thus might put the nozzle a little bit higher. I think that's why I got such consistent results. I started off my testing by printing two Voron cubes. The first was done with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The second was done with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. Both were done at a layer height of 0.2 millimeters and they both came out awesome. Can you tell the difference between the two? Next, I switched over to the 0.8 millimeter nozzle and printed off another Voron cube at 0.3 millimeter layer height. The only problem I saw were two droops on each side due to cooling. But since this was basically a 0.6 millimeter profile with the nozzle diameter change, I was extremely happy with the results. Just a little bit of tweaking and I could get this thing printing perfectly. Finally, I switched over to the 0.25 millimeter nozzle and decided to print a Voron cube at 0.1 millimeter layer height. I then noticed that this was gonna take me four hours. So I scaled it down by 0.625, which is the difference between 0.4 and 0.25, and got this printed off within the hour. It looks absolutely beautiful and just the damn cutest thing ever. I swapped back to a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and printed off my first Banshee. And you know what? I was really happy with the results. Just a little bit of stringing, nothing that a few tweaks won't fix. While printing my first Banshee, I got the idea of printing this tiny little cute Banshee to go with my tiny little Voron cube. I noticed that the material requirement was so low that I was able to use a scrap piece of Pet G that I had laying around and he came out absolutely beautiful. I swapped over to the 0.6 millimeter nozzle and printed this earth elemental overnight. I used a 0.25 millimeter layer height to speed up the print and I think it turned out awesome. There is a little bit of artifacting that I could see over the eye line right here. However, that's to be expected with a layer height this big. Next, I jumped back to a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and printed off this banshee using a 0.1 millimeter layer height. And I must say, it turned out amazing. 
I then jumped back to a 0.25 millimeter nozzle and printed off this Viking. I was super happy with the results and the only defect I could see in a print was one that was caused by me removing supports aggressively with a set of pliers. Things were going good, too good. So I decided to throw a real challenge at the Revo. I went back to a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and loaded up a white PLA filament that I have nicknamed the White Death. I have never had a print finish from this filament. I swear it was cursed. You might think that this is a failure, but I have never had this filament finish a print. Most banshees printed with it would fail about halfway through the haul. This was a tremendous success. My next print was this nozzle holder provided by E3D. It was done in Prusament Orange, Petchy of course, and I used a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. It came out absolutely flawless and looks beautiful. I wanted to print this in a 0.3 millimeter layer height, but I forgot to change that setting. So this is where the story goes south. The next print that I sent failed. I tried it again and again and again, and every time it would release about this high. I needed to know what was going on. And after a little bit of investigation, I was happy that it was not a problem caused by the Revo. Over the last few weeks, I've been doing a lot of ABS printing on my Prusa, and I guess the heat got to one of my Y bearings. It was causing the bed to vibrate, which was causing it to release. Since I do not have a replacement bearing at this time, I simply slow down the print to 80% speed, which has made the problem go away until I can get a replacement bearing. So let's finish off this review with a little bit of housekeeping. The Revo 6 is a drop-in replacement for the V6 nozzle that you'll find in a Prusa. The only trick is you have to cut your own PTFE tube. This might be difficult for some people, but E3D has provided you with enough to cut about four times as much as you need. So you have a couple kicks at the can to get it right. Unfortunately, you can't just reuse the one you have from the V6 nozzle, as this one is shorter. You could, however, cut the V6 PTFE tube down if you're not comfortable chamfering the interior or the exterior. I suggest leaving the interior bit if it's in good shape. During my tests, I did not have any clogs, jams, or extruder skips. I didn't even have any leakage around the threads, which is a common issue on nozzles that are not tightened perfectly. I simply used my fingers and by feel, and it was awesome. Some early reviews on the Revo have said that it's difficult to remove on the Prusa. That wasn't the case for me. I have big fat Polish sausage fingers and I was able to get under there without having to remove the fan shroud. The only trick was that I needed to lift my extruder fairly high up there to get at it with my hands. So to summarize, I am really happy with the Revo ecosystem on the Mark III. It fixes a problem that I had and it's freed me of my secret shame of having to use two machines when I really only needed one. If you're having the same problem, I highly recommend it. So that's it for the review. If you have any additional questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. If you would like to see a follow-up video to see how this is performing a few months down the line, let me know. I'm always available for video suggestions. So thank you for watching. I encourage you to scotch scribe and we have a tradition on this channel where I sign off with a toast to your good health. So na zdrowie.